Good morning, adventurers. Good morning. The last time you saw us, we were out in the woods in the Eco Lodge, a little bit north of Stockholm. Mm -hmm. But since then, we drove back down here, dropped off our rental car, and we slept in a real bed. It's we took nice. showers. You guys, look how clean we are. Ah. It's, oh, what was that? So, I don't know. Really extraordinary. I was confused. <laughs> Retake. <laughs> But if you thought we were going to leave Sweden without trying Swedish meatballs, you were wrong. You dead were wrong. Dead wrong. There might not be anything that is more associated with Sweden than Swedish meatballs. There are places all over the city, I'm sure, that you can try amazing meatballs, but there's one place we want to go to that branches out from the traditional classic Swedish meatballs, so there's gonna be a bunch of different types for us to try. Mm -hmm. And that place is called IKEA. I'm just kidding. We're not going to IKEA, oh. don't worry. <laughs> she confused me for a second. But for now, I guess we're gonna go put some balls in our mouth. Nothing new for us, right? That is literally what we're gonna do though. All right, this is over, let's do it. <laughs> We have got so many meatballs to try. <laughs> so this place has a bunch of different types of meats that you can get, but they also have the traditional one, which we got that as well. So if you ask a Swede where the best meatballs are, they might say their mother or their grandmother or something like that, but we don't have access to a Swedish grandmother to make us meatballs. So this is the next best thing for us. This is a traditional meatball plate. So you've got your meatballs over here, which are ground pork and beef, cream, egg, and onion is basically everything that's all ground up in there. We've got a thick brown gravy, which you can see looks delicious. Some potatoes over here, some lingonberries, which are, should add a nice little tartness to it. And then we have some pickled cucumber over here, which should add a little bit of acidity. Let's cut into this meatball. Oh my gosh, you guys, we are so hungry. <laughs> we accidentally uh, gave ourselves way too much of an appetite. It's 1 p.m. already and we haven't even eaten because yeah. it's so horrible. So I think I'm gonna try it just with a little bit of gravy without mixing too much of it up. Just see how the meatball itself is. You can see it's very finely blended in there. Everything is very uniform. Mm, mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like a delicious British banger, but without the casing on the outside of it. The meat is so nice and dense, but juicy and creamy on the inside. The flavor of the gravy is actually awesome. The combination of the gravy and the meatball together is just magical. I'm gonna get a pickle on there, see how I like that. Get some of the berries, what are you doing, man? Should I put those on there too? Of okay. Aha, done. <laughs> the perfect meatball bite. It is absolutely delicious. You get the savoriness of the meatballs. You get the pickle flavor of the pickles, which is a little bit sour. Then you get a bit of the tartness of the berries and potato just kind of holds it all together and adds a little bit more savoriness as well. All right, potatoes are really good. They're super creamy. They serve meatballs several different ways. Eric went with the classic. I got the special, which is boar meatballs with roasted potatoes chanterelle mushrooms and then it has a black currant gravy on it or black currant sauce so it's kind of similar components but in a very different way i'm pretty excited about this i don't know we've had a bit of boar lately and i think it's always been pretty good maybe i'll do like you and just try it kind of on its own with the sauce i've been drooling over there while eric's been eating all of his freaking mushrooms or <laughs> all of his freaking meatballs i don't even know what i'm saying i'm so hungry Mm. That is so good. It does have the consistency of like Salisbury steak or something that we ate when we were Oh yeah, little. that's a good way to describe it. This sauce though, it's so thick and decadent though. The black currant in there. So it does taste a little bit like gravy, but it's got a bit of a sweetness. These mushrooms, oh my gosh, they're so good. Mm. This place doesn't just have the classic meatballs or the more four meatballs. They actually have, I think, up to 14 different types of meatballs. So we wanted to try at least one more because I think our bellies can handle it. So we opted for veal meatballs. They don't, we just got a side of them. We didn't really know what to expect. So there's no gravy or anything. So maybe I'll just try it on its own. Sure. Oh, you turd. Buzz off, buddy. <laughs> getting into our, getting into our meatballs, our precious meatballs. Tastes like there's a lot of oregano in there. The spices are really good on that one. They're all so different. 
it's cool that they're all the same consistency and they look the same, but they all taste completely different. I just love all the heartiness of it. It's like Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah. This restaurant, Meatballs for the People, was started by three friends. I guess one of them went to Italy and for whatever reason bought a meatball machine. I don't even know exactly what that means, but he came back with it and then him and his two other friends spent the summer making meatballs and just having a grand old time and decided they just wanted to open the best meatball restaurant in Stockholm. And that seems to be quite a success because since 2013 they've been open and I think they've just been getting more and more and more popular. I'm sure if you're coming to Stockholm, you might've heard of this place. I think it's uh, frequented by locals and tourists alike and for good reason, it's delicious. found ourselves a little cafe called Drop Coffee, which is supposed to have some incredible coffee. We are taking another stab at having a proper Swedish Fika because the first time we did it, we tried a cardamom bun, which was good, but not exactly our style. I don't think I would get this over a cinnamon roll or cinnamon bun, but it's really unique. I'm really enjoying that aspect of it. And then we had an epic fail in Gothenburg when we tried to get the giant cinnamon roll. Oh my gosh, look at this cinnamon roll. Just kidding. They're sold out. But since it's our last day in Sweden, we are going to give it another go. There's actually a bakery right across the corner here called Bagari Petras. And they have uh, what's called Kanelbuller. Probably not how you pronounce it, but but it's a, basically a cinnamon roll and it's a very popular thing to have for Swedish fika. It's really nice and kind of flattened. The design you can see is really pretty and it's got some almond shavings and some thick little um, coarse ground sugar on top there. And it's really nice and uh, sticky and gooey still. I'm very excited for that because all the other buns and rolls we've had have been pretty hard and not that moist. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. that reminds me of being a kid, staying with my grandma. She always had cinnamon rolls for us. This is so good. It's really sweet and cinnamony. It's a little spicy from the cinnamon, but it's got so much sugar on there that it evens it out. I definitely don't think I could eat all of this on my own, so I'm glad I have you here because it's pretty sweet. But... I'm up to the challenge. Oh, it's so good. It's interesting how thin it is. It's like the size of a pancake. Oh, yeah. That was miles better than that one we had on that fail of a day that we didn't even fill because it wasn't worth it. But this one's good. The more I ate this cinnamon roll, the more I'm just absolutely in love with it. It's so delicious. But all good things have to come to an end. And there's still so much more of the city to see, so let's go. Welcome to Stockholm's Medieval Museum. Uh, from my understanding, this area was actually going to be a parking lot and they started uh, digging down and then they started coming across these artifacts and it turns out there were city walls, there was a grave site here, part of a church, a bunch of boats all buried underground and then there was all this debate over what to do with everything, where it should go, where all these bodies should go. And then they decided, let's just turn it into a museum. So there is no parking lot here. Instead, you go down underground into a museum to see some of the old walls of the city. And now it's got all these amazing artifacts and history of the city and what it's gone through. It's way cool. Yeah, lots of really cool models and replicas and stuff like that, mm -hmm. all really lifelike. So as you walk into this room, you get up close with some of the actual ruins of the wall. It's really neat. Learning about history is one thing, but seeing the history is a completely mm -hmm. other thing, and it's so neat. No, I don't like get closer. it. I can't. I don't want to. <laughs> it's too scary. You'd be surprised how scary it is just looking this thing directly in the eye. The minute that you lock eyes with it, God, I swear, it tingles you to the bone. You think he's going to say something to you. <laughs> It's making me sweat, it's creepy. It says in addition to the foundations and stuff, they found seven tons of human bones and three tons of animal bones, 11 boats and a huge number of other objects. So they were greeted with a lot of this when they were excavating this place. Uh. <laughs> 
You think you're down here building a parking garage and then you come across seven tons of yeah. bones. You're just one shovel away from unearthing a human skull. <laughs> the coolest part so far has been the models that they have over there. They have this model, this whole battlefield, all hand painted and hand constructed. And uh, it really makes me want to just make a little model <laughs> or something. Eric really loves little model Yeah, things. I do. They're, they're so awesome. <laughs> I think um, he would buy a house just so he could get little models to yeah. paint there. Right now I got nowhere to put it. Can't put it in my backpack. <laughs> Anyways, they are closing, but highly recommend coming and, get, and checking this museum out. It was free, which we didn't realize that. We thought we were going to have yes. to pay to come in, but it was completely free. Yeah, and I would say give yourself maybe 45 minutes to an hour, and they actually have an audio guide, which you might have to pay for. So you can get all sorts of great information. Everyone always asks her to take a picture. I don't know why, but... It's because he's always off filming and I'm just like, blah, 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 I'm not doing anything and they know it. When they come up to ask to take a picture, I run away and make her do it. <laughs> every time, every time. So we've actually just been walking around Gamlestan for the past few hours, which is this little island that is a really well-preserved medieval city, essentially. It's kind of like walking through an old museum, but we've worked up quite an appetite and we have come to Magnus La... Shoot, I already forgot, I lost it. <laughs> Magnus Ladulas, and we came to get this lovely, it is fish soup, which I believe is Svenska Fiskola. Fiskopa? Fiskopa? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I'm not great with the Swedish pronunciations, it's I apologize. It's actually really hard. <laughs> yeah, but it's funny because the menu says that it's a casserole, essentially, like fish casserole, but it's definitely more of a soup. It's a bunch of seafood topped with Parmesan and aioli, and it looks and smells amazing. It looks super hearty. All right, you have to get one of these beautiful mussels. Oh yeah, look how huge that is. So I think there's some white fish in here, maybe some salmon, a bunch of veggies, and it definitely looks it's like it's in a some sort of tomato broth. Oh, mm. it's so savory and so well seasoned and it's a little tangy it's got the nice a little bit of fishiness from the mussels but it's really hearty and the veggies i love in there the parmesan on top oh my gosh this is gonna get is some of that aioli on there yeah is that what this yeah, thing get is get some aioli in the next oh, bite oh, is that too much it looks too. amazing okay let's get a, a good rounded bite <laughs> Whoa, it's so garlicky. Oh my gosh, that aioli is fantastic. I'm very happy this is our <laughs> final official meal. You got me kind of jealous because I just I stuck know. with a burger because everywhere I walk around, I see a sign All for a burger and I was like, Eric's like, I want a burger. I'm like, come on, man. And then we come here and there was a burger on the menu. He's like, I, I did it. Burger. I should have done it, but I did it. But I mean, the burger looks pretty good. So I, I mean, think it's it going to be pretty tasty. Great. Everything on the menu looks great. You could get reindeer, you could get other fish dishes, you could get other meat dishes. They had the whole gamut here. We have had such a fantastic time in Sweden though. I am sad that it is coming to an end tomorrow. We will be yeah. flying back to the States, oh my gosh. To New York City, y'all. To New York, we haven't been there in a while. We'll be um, going through New York, Montana, and Washington. All right, good night adventures. We'll see you on the road.